your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Good morning and welcome to the new year. I'm Michael Rowland. And I'm Emma Alberici. Thanks for your company. Making the news today, goodbye 2015, hello 2016. The nation rings in the new year with spectacular fireworks displays throughout the country. Happy New Year! Amazing! Oh, I don't know. The fire engulfs a 60-storey hotel near Dubai's New Year's Eve fireworks display. Belgian police detain six people in connection with a New Year's Eve terror plot. The bushfire threat eases in South Australia, while in Victoria, evacuated communities begin to return home. Hi, I'm Alison Branley. Coming up shortly, I'll take you onto the high wire at Circus Oz, where performers are preparing for their upcoming Australian show. In sport, Travis Head, the hero for Adelaide, an unbeaten century against the Sixers in the Big Bash. Heavy rain in the centre of the country, but a pleasant day for the Eastern Capitals. Australia has celebrated the end of 2015 and welcomed in 2016 with a series of parties and spectacular fireworks displays across the nation. An estimated 1.6 million people flooded into central Sydney to watch the country's largest New Year's Eve display, which centred on the city's Harbour Bridge. to get bigger and better every year, doesn't it, Emma? This is the seven tonnes of fireworks, the seven million dollars worth of fireworks going off spectacularly on the stroke of midnight. I think uh, they, they let off about uh, a half, if not 60% of the fireworks within the space of about two minutes, and it clearly shows. Yeah. I, I just think it must be such a challenge every year to try to outdo mm. the year before. It's such a great palette, though, to have uh, fireworks hang on the Sydney Harbour Bridge there are very few countries in the world that offers uh, uh, organizes such a look brilliant platform that, yeah look at that rain that fireworks raining fireworks now, it wasn't just Sydney of course uh, in Brisbane on the banks of the river there around South Bank there were fantastic fireworks displays as well as the people of Queensland ushered in the new year and uh, we're getting reports from around the country that people were generally well behaved, so there weren't any uh, great uh, cases of, uh, of um, violence or any, any need for police to be extra, extra um, special in terms of their, their treatment of uh, New Year's Eve revellers. It once again led the celebrations to mark the start of the new year last night. Our reporter Mark Reddy is appropriately at Bondi Beach for this the clean morning. Up. For the clean up. Mark, good morning. What's the scene there? Yeah, celebrations are very much continuing down here at Bondi Beach this morning. Michael, you can probably see behind me, there's around 300 people gathering on the beach to watch the sunrise. Uh, people have entered the water because it is a perfect Sydney summer's morning. Uh, some others here have uh, start, started setting up picnics and getting out the deck chairs. So, uh, you know, 2016 is really in full swing. Now, of course, overnight we saw those fantastic fireworks on Sydney Harbour. 23,000 of them lit up the night sky at midnight. Uh, I guess the highlight was that red waterfall. We saw cascading off the bridge and those yellow fireworks booming through those pylons as well. Um, the two major pylons on either side of the bridge for the first time lit up with uh, video projections. That was uh, for Taronga Zoo. It was their 100th anniversary and the 200th anniversary of the Royal Botanic Gardens. And those projections had animals and scenes from Taronga Zoo as well. So it was quite a special event down there. Um, it was obviously in course of in that theme of the city of colour and we saw plenty of it. Uh, between the fireworks we saw those illuminated boats on the harbour. It was absolutely spectacular and uh, overall we've got crowd numbers coming into us now. More than 1.6 million people lined the foreshore and of course you could see that from the pictures. It was absolutely jam-packed. And Mark, what are police telling us about the crowd behaviour last night? 
Yeah, New South Wales Police have described uh, the behaviour as responsible and positive. So they say that generally speaking, revellers were uh, very um, responsive to police orders. Uh, we do know as well that there were two and a half thousand extra police officers patrolling the CBD. 30 people were arrested and police say that that was relatively good. Half of those were drug-related offences. Now, just up the road from me here at Bondi, a 57-year-old man was arrested at Dover Heights over an alleged bomb hoax, and uh, he was taken to Waverley Police Station and charged with public mischief. Now, um, Ambulance New South Wales also had an extremely busy night, 2,000 incidents in total, but their busiest period was between 12 and 2 o'clock this morning, 507 incidents. We heard on breakfast yesterday from St John's Ambulance and they said that uh, usually they respond to an incident every 25 seconds between that period. Last night it was 14 seconds, so they said it was their busiest on record, but most of those uh, incidents were related to drug and alcohol, so they were quite minor, they say. However, um, their busiest period was when people actually started leaving those vantage points and getting on public transport. Those huge crowd numbers were extraordinary. Yeah, it's amazing. It all went off largely without a hitch. Mark Reddy at Bondi Beach looking spectacular there. Thank you very much for the update. And in developing news this morning, a massive fire has engulfed a 60-storey luxury hotel near Dubai's New Year's Eve fireworks display. The blaze is at the Address Hotel, that's what the hotel is called, which is near the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest skyscraper. There are no details yet on whether anyone has been injured. People have been asked to evacuate the area. Belgian police have detained a further six people in connection with an alleged plot to target Brussels on New Year's Eve. Two more suspects who were detained yesterday are still being questioned. Authorities cancelled the city's New Year's Eve celebrations, saying the threat was too great for them to go ahead. An alleged Islamic State supporter has been arrested in New York on suspicion of planning a New Year's Eve machete attack on a restaurant. The 25-year-old has been charged with attempting to provide material support to the jihadist group. Thousands of previously secret cabinet documents from 1990 and 1991 have been released by the National Archives of Australia. The documents reveal a cabinet divided on issues such as uranium mining at Coronation Hill and Kakadu, the treatment of asylum seekers and the leadership struggle between Bob Hawke and his treasurer, Paul Keating. A bushfire on South Australia's Fluro Peninsula has been downgraded after destroying six abandoned buildings and burning through more than 300 hectares. Fire crews battled extreme heat to contain the blaze at Mosquito Hill, which had earlier threatened homes. And cooler temperatures in Victoria have provided relief for firefighters on the state's southwest coast. Residents from Kennet River, Green River and Wangara are now returning to their homes after an earlier evacuation notice. Now let's take a quick look at the finance figures and the Dow is down 0.4 of a percent. London's FTSE also lost ground overnight, down half a percent. The Australian dollar is buying nearly 73 US cents. Tapas crude trading at 38 US dollars a barrel. Gold is worth 1,060 US dollars an ounce. And filling in for Vanessa this morning is Kirsten Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning, Michael, and Happy New Year. Just a quick look at the weather. Partly cloudy for Sydney, 26. Partly cloudy also for Brisbane and Melbourne. Hobart, a possible shower, 19. A possible late storm in Adelaide, 35. Windy in Perth, 35. A top of 33 in Darwin. And some heavy rain around the centre of the country today, particularly outback South Australia. I'll have more on that shortly. Thanks very much, Kirsten. Happy New Year to you as well. Staying with the bushfires and in Western Australia, a bushfire emergency warning has been issued for the southwestern part of Secret Harbour in the city of Rockingham. The Department of Fire and Emergency Services says people need to leave now and there is a threat to lives and property. The bushfire is out of control and unpredictable. Let's get more now on the fire situation in Victoria. Our reporter Danny Tran is at Apollo Bay. Danny, Happy New Year to you and perhaps not such a happy beginning of the year for the people in that area. Uh 
Emma, a happy new year to you, first of all. And actually, it turned out to be quite a happy new year for some of the residents who'd been evacuated uh, from Kennet River, Grey River, Sugarloaf and Wangara. They were told uh, late last night that they would be able to return home. About half past seven, some of them received a text message letting them know that it was safe to do so. Now, And some of them chose to do so uh, last night when they got that message. Police were letting people through the roadblock at Skeen's Creek and but still telling them that the danger was not completely over that they needed to be very very vigilant we spoke to a few of them last night it's a great relief yeah I didn't think we'd be allowed back until at least 10 p.m. so getting in a bit early is great I've got lots of animals running all over my farm and I'd be very happy to see them in daylight and see where they've got to we had our plan our plan was that if it got dark we were able to see over the couple of ranges, um, I've got really close, we're out of there. Bags were packed, cars were pointing in the right direction, so yeah, we're all good. No, we're very happy. But I think, as again, the essential services, take my hat off to them, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Notifications, um, the whole box and dice. So, Danny... Now, Emma, the threat isn't completely over. Um, we, the, the fires are still burning out of control at Kennet River, Grey River, Sugarloaf and Wangara. But at this stage, there is currently no threat to the community. And so what are authorities saying in terms of precautions over the next couple of days? The police at uh, the Skeens Creek roadblock were just telling residents they need to be very, very vigilant. Uh, as we know, the danger isn't over and pe they're urging people to listen to ABC local radio and just monitor the conditions. Uh, the, a few of the people we spoke to last night were concerned that the, the fire would flare up again. But at this stage, a cool change has come through um, and it's, it, it, it looks like uh, it, it, the, the threat has passed uh, at least temporarily. Danny Tran there in Apollo Bay, thank you. Let's take a look at the front pages of the major newspapers around the country on this first day of 2016. Let's start with the Herald Sun, where many New Year's Eve revellers flock to the beaches to escape the Melbourne heat. The Age also looks at how Victorians brought in the New Year. It also says a New Year's Eve fire at a CBD apartment building contains illegal rooming houses. In today's Mercury, musician Courtney Barnett helped bring in the New Year at the Falls Festival, Marion Bay. The advertiser reports 2015 ended in South Australia with another bushfire emergency and more dangerous fire weather forecast for the new year. The Courier Mail says comedian Bill Cosby is facing the first criminal proceedings from a series of sexual assault allegations. The West Australian says doctors are being inundated with requests for a fertility test that is unreliable and may do more harm than good. The Northern Territory News says diesel drivers in the top end are paying 12 cents a litre more for their fuel than the rest of the country. Now, many of this morning's papers have stories on former Prime Minister Bob Hawke, who has spoken after the release of those Cabinet documents from 1990 and 1991. The Australian says Mr Hawke has called, out, called for the ALP to cut ties with the CFMEU. In the Sydney Morning Herald, Mr Hawke has blamed prejudice and power broker Graham Richardson for his political demise. The Canberra Times says Mr Hawke believes it was his decision to criticise colleagues for their prejudices towards Aboriginal people that ultimately cost him the job of Prime Minister. In The Guardian Australia, Bob Hawke criticises the Obama administration for failing to resolve the Israel-Palestinian conflict. And The Daily Telegraph says Bob Hawke has admitted he was relieved to be knifed by Paul Keating in the end because it freed him to marry the love of his life in the form of Blanche Dalpuget, a very... Uh, Heartfelt message at a media conference Bob Hawke gave over the release of those Cabinet documents. Uh, he says, yes, there was lots of bitterness in 1991. There were those two challenges, the second one successful by Paul Keating. But in the end, Bob Hawke says that if he didn't lose the top job, if he wasn't kicked out of the lodge, he may never have married Blanche and be as happy as he is today. So mm. in, that, in that sense, he says that political tale has a happy ending. Yes, indeed. It's... Um Always quite revelatory when those cabinet papers Finally, are... Finally, a bit of tennis around, suggesting the Australian Open isn't far away. Overnight in Abu Dhabi, big serving Milos Raonic. That's uh, 214 kilometres an hour there. He looked every bit of contender with a comfortable win over South African Kevin Anderson. And David Ferrer set up a semi-final against compatriot Rafa Nadal after trouncing world number 10, Joe Wilfred Songer. 
And that's all in sport after a busy night. Lots going on. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, today is Kirsten Benes. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Well, you can see on the satellite a lot of clouds across the centre there and into Queensland. Now that's generating heavy rain in parts leading to flooding and storms. It's a monsoon low that's bringing that rain. There is a severe weather warning for South Australia's northeast pastoral district for heavy rain which may lead to flooding. Let's have a closer look at Queensland now. So that rain in the west with showers also in the north. Brisbane partly cloudy today and 29. In New South Wales the slight chance of showers in the northwest and also on the southern slopes and ranges. Sydney partly cloudy and 26. Hot in Canberra 34 degrees. Degrees. To Victoria, isolated afternoon showers and storms over the eastern ranges, light showers on the coast, Melbourne partly cloudy and 27. A cloudy day for Tasmania, light showers for the south and east coasts, showers and possible storms developing in the north, Hobart a possible shower and 19. To South Australia, heavy rain for parts of the northeast corner and a slight chance of showers over the south, but some high temperatures today with a severe fire danger today for the northwest pastoral and west coast, Adelaide a possible late storm and 35. To WA and showers possible for parts of the south, particularly near the coast. There's also a damaging winds warning for the lower west and southwest districts and a severe fire danger around the south and western districts today. Perth is headed for a windy morning and 35 degrees. Further north and showers possible over the Kimberley and the chance of showers for most of the Northern Territory with heavy rain likely in the Simpson district which may lead to localised flooding. Darwin partly cloudy and 33. A quick look at tomorrow and that nice weather in the east continues. Brisbane 30 degrees, 25 in Sydney, a top of 24 in Melbourne. Hot in Perth though, 37 degrees. Fabulous, thanks very much Kirsten. We can show you now pictures of the countdown clock in Dubai as we count down towards uh, what is expected to be a massive uh, fireworks display uh, in, that, in that city. Uh, 500,000 LED lights and lots of fireworks to go with it. We're back on breakfast after this very short break.